Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Whenever you have access to men who have this result, your proximity should be an opportunity to do whatever it is scripturally within your means to get them to open you up to the patterns. Listen, when God gives you unusual access to great people, you would be unwise if all you do is celebrate the leverage. It is no leverage until the patterns are revealed to you. Learn this. Many of you have served great men of God. Many of you have served billionaires. Many of you served senators. And all you have are their photos. All you have are physical gifts they gave you. You didn't do well. Sir, what took you from a local government chairman to a senator that regardless the antagonisms and without bribing you still remain? Show me a pattern. And the man will tell you it started from my grandmother. One day I took a cup of water to mama and she said kneel down she said i did not do well but i lay my hands upon you and i elevate you to be higher than me oh that is it see let me repeat it one more time please listen to me results do not happen by luck results are exact engagings or engagements of patterns the purpose of scripture is that you have access to these patterns. Scattered through scripture are patterns that correspond to various dimensions of the glory of God. A few have found some. Others have found quite some. But God is still counting on many who will find all. For instance, raising the dead is still a mystery across the body of Christ. Do you know that I believe that there are times we will find these patterns and it will become as frequent as healing headaches? Is that true? Now you see sicknesses and diseases as much as we desire with all our hearts to see people healed. It grieves my heart when I see people who were prayed for and did not get the kind of healing they desired. But th there were times in the Bible when the Bible would say Jesus healed them all. The disciples thought it was just by laying on of hands. They went to drag that epileptic patient, you remember? And they embarrassed themselves there. Nothing happened and they came to Jesus. They said, listen, we're frustrated. Why couldn't this happen? And Jesus told them, because of your own belief, this kind goeth not but by this and that and that. And Peter kept following. A time came when the shadow of Peter. You can see growth, measurable growth. The Bible says God wrought special miracles, Act 19, Acts chapter 19, by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from him were put upon the sick. Come on now. The ways of God is the secret that this generation needs. Listen, we have had sermons, wonderful sermons, commendably so, we have heard songs we have heard recitations but it's time for a, a a manifestation an accurate communication of provable patterns patterns whose glory you can relate with so that we don't build on rubbles and shadows celebrating supposed remas that don't seem to have corresponding levels of glory because hear me the world that is coming in the next 10 years is not this world that you know it will be a world of precision and proofs let me repeat to you prophetically that the world that is that our civilization is evolving into are you seeing the level of accuracy that science is attaining onto with the manifestation of ai right now and all of these things there is exactitude and precision even in medicine except the church listen revival is threefold number one the individual number two the body of christ then number three territories 
we are still in phase one where God is bringing an awakening to individuals because that's the pattern we see in the life of Gideon the first thing that happened was a personal revival for Gideon the Gideon pattern now then after Gideon was walked upon he said now go in this demise Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 of his men now came and even among them there was a pruning until they were left 300 and it was with those they went and defeated the Midianites so the first thing God is doing is personal awakenings and revivals planting a hunger in people young and old from every nation and every territory and what a joy God has mandated Africa and even Nigeria every continent has sounded their shofar we're about to hear the shofar that comes from Nigeria and my goodness and Africa it will be loud and clear we may not export oil we may not export other technological products but we are exporting the spirit with power with proof we are exporting superior dimensions of the spirit we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh It is only a revived man that can cause revival. It is only a transformed man that can bring transformation. It says, such as I have, give I. So when we talk about awakenings and revivals, many of us are just thinking going to the nations. No, you go to the nations without miracle working power. You go to the nations broke and hungry and tired. No, allow that which you want to import to work in your life first. Then you will come with confidence. 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 The things we have seen, the things we have heard, it says that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we preach now you can stand and tell a generation we have not brought you cunningly devised fables listen we're about to pray i want to ask you a few questions question one is it true that god walks through men don't just answer think about it can the God of the universe actually hold the hands of a mortal man and walk with that man? I was speaking some time ago with a consultant who was telling me, please sit down. The consultant was telling me some of the advancements that have happened in medicine. And based on what he told me, here's what he said, that right now, using the power of the internet, a doctor from somewhere can actually be performing surgical procedures without being there physically using the power of robotics and all of that you know I said wow that just reminded me that the God of heaven can find expression through the hands of mortal men so you see possibilities that are beyond the man and you know that there must be a mighty God producing this I ask you again is it true that the God of the heavens whom the heavens cannot even contain, that he can literally live, speak, and walk through men. Do you believe it is possible? Question two, do you believe it can happen with you? That these hands can literally the hand of Jehovah can rest upon an ordinary man's hand 
and you will command possibilities that these lips of clay as frail as they are his majesty can echo his voice and everyone in Zion can hear and know that he's the one speaking I'm asking you a question do you believe he said great is the mystery of godliness that God can become a man ladies and gentlemen this was a revelation that the fathers caught today it is a theological debate in the church was never meant to be so is it true that God can live through men and manifest provable possibilities in their lives how do you keep speaking and people are shouting up and down are you a herbalist by what mechanism My strings man is not here. tonight is that you leave the realm of shadow boxing there is a higher dimension in the spirit a dimension where all of you becomes a mysterious manifestation an unfolding of this glory that Shekinah glory through your life possibilities that cause men to wonder and you see every time men look at you and they think you are so great then you remind them that we are only ordinary men defended by the jealousy of a great God that he stands behind us as a mighty terrible one this is what is making you become a mystery to many a sermon to many a challenge to others that your life becomes an effulgence did we not read about this man in the bible did they not carry the power of god from nation to nation it's not by empty grammar and speaking no we bring the possibilities of the kingdom provable realities demonstrating the ministry of the spirit here and now oh it's time to rise it's time to rise it's time to shake that shake that old you shake that old you shake the powerless you shake the canal you shake the flesh you shake the sense driven you rise to the realm of the spiritual hallelujah i want you to sing for me a song The atmosphere is changing now For 
the Spirit of the Lord. The evidence is on. Hallelujah. This man looking at me, lift your hands. I saw fire coming upon you. That man, I stretch my hands upon you. In the name of Jesus, you are drinking of the wine of the spirit. Let it open you to a new face. A new face. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What does it take to walk in the power of God? What does it take to be a conduit releasing the possibilities of the spirit to the nations? What does it take to bring the counsel of Jesus to the nations? What does it take to be an epitome of the blessing of the Lord? What does it take to find favor with God and with men? The answers to these and more are shrouded in this mystery called the ways of God. He can show men his ways. We can feast on the patterns of the Spirit and with them manifest wonders in this life. Prayer point number one. Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes, open my eyes. Someone cry to your maker. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Open my eyes. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Zaria, are you praying? Abuja, are you praying? Koinonia Global, cry. You may be a man of God an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist. Hear me, we are in the days of his power. There is a mighty awakening across the nations of the earth. Open my eyes, show me the keys to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Open my eyes, show me the keys to operating the healing anointing. Open my eyes, show me the keys to restoration. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your spirit I'm from the ashes of the field. The resurrected King. Hear me. Listen. I ask you the first question. That is it true that God can come to indwell men? Question two. Do you believe that the anointing of the Spirit upon a man can cause you to operate and manifest dimensions of possibilities that are not given to mortal men? That this engracing we call the anointing. It says, I have found my servant David. Psalm 89 and verse 20. That with my holy oil have I anointed him. I have anointed him whom my hand will lift. Are we together now? 21. It says that the enemy shall not exert upon him. Verse 23. It says, I will afflict, I will beat down his foes before his face. 
and plague them that hate him the last verse it says but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with you and in my name shall his horn his horn is his authority his influence his relevance shall be exalted that's why I raised that song in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected King is resurrecting me hear me you see the thing about the dealings of God with men please listen carefully the thing about the dealings of God with men is that at any level you can start with God and I'm not just talking of new birth at any level spiritually but the first law of transformation is that you must admit the limitations of your current state in pride transformation is an impossibility you have to first acknowledge that I am limited may be a man of God may be a businessman but my current frame of reference is not pro is not producing the possibilities then God can come to you with his mercy when I cry to God I cry as though I have not known him I cry as if I do not know anything about the anointing I am amazed at our arrogance in the body of Christ over the little that we see whereas there are virgin dimensions in the spirit to explore the current context of our definition of strength cannot host the revival coming it will take superior manifestations of the power of God if it is the nations we want to take uh -uh. we must quit this blind arrogance and begin to pursue with sincerity we have tried but not enough the current idea of what we call strength and power and results in the body of Christ I submit to you it is not notable enough to compel the nations it says where the carcasses are do you know what it means to make diplomats to make nations to make kings to make people from the Middle East you know what it takes to turn their attention from their busy schedules to look at Jesus it's in you Lord it's in you Lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Listen, with all due respect, we're about to pray. We talk a lot about prosperity in the body of Christ, and I respect all that God has done. But how many of us can give to nations and still be able to sleep sound? We are not there yet. Let us be sincere with ourselves being blessed enough for yourself is not really the blessing until you can give to the kingdom in a notable way as though it's a government giving and it does not affect you you are not yet there the ones who are there are lots of unbelievers commendably there but the church needs to rise look at the way we beg for money we manipulate for money it's unnecessary we must contend for superior levels many years ago the Lord revealed to me that there are seven dimensions of kingdom wealth that he was bringing to the body of Christ and at the time he revealed to me he told me we were only on level three three you will see men who will stand like nations whose lives will be a mystery economically when they speak it will be a combined echo of the spirit and resources and some of you this is what God is preparing you to become but this version of you cannot host that glory no not with your life still mad with a lot of carnality and greed and just wanting cars and houses no the kind of end time wealth we're talking about is beyond I'm wearing a Rolex I'm wearing this I'm wearing designers that's wonderful but we are talking about nations saved in one day using the resources of the kingdom How about evangelists and pastors we preach for hours and only two souls will come out that is wonderful but it's too slow in in the world today on average I, I the last I checked and I've shared it here the statistics shows 
that the Christian faith only accounts for about 2.6 billion people out of the over 8 billion people now on earth. That is too small and is too slow. If it takes 100 years or 200 years to win 2.6 billion people, then it means we are doing a bad job. Minus those who die, minus those who are born, and the 2.6 includes backsliders on serious Christians mixed together. And yet he wants the gospel to reach all the 8 billion. There must be an accelerator factor. How are we going to get to the remaining over 5.4 billion who must hear about Jesus? Ladies and gentlemen, provided we are still fighting one another, I am for Paul and Apollos. All that is a demonic distraction to waste our time. Because none of us I have taught here sustains the ability to host the global harvest. I say it respectfully to the body of Christ. Any individuals who believe, either as an individual or as a group, or as a ministry, as a church, we can only do our best. It is only in unity that that mission will happen. In this unity, our inefficiencies laced with pride will become glaring and it will become the biggest impedance to our making that progress, even more than demon spirits. We must come to a place of respectful admission that our individual efforts can only go so far. It is the collective effort of the church, the ecclesia, that church from Asia to America, to the Caribbeans, to the Middle East, to Africa, to Europe, together as a united body. And unity does not mean uniformity. We don't have to do the same thing. We must just be guided by one cause. That when the trumpet is blown in Zion, everybody can hear and everybody can take their battle formation, acting according and within the measure of the grace allotted. This is what God calls for. Again, I will refer you to my message, Redefining Revival. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. I really believe in what God is doing. But I submit to you, our current result cannot host the new that is coming. The Bible says you cannot put new wine. You know what Jesus was talking about? That you cannot put new wine where? In an old wine skin. That means every, he said... And he, tell, he tells us why. That if you put new wine in an old wine skin, it is going to tear it. So every time God wants to tear the old wine skin, he puts a bit of the new wine so that the old will tear and give room for a complete vessel. If you want the new wine, what's that song? Where there is new wine, there is new power. Sing it for me. I lay down my own to carry on you today. Hear me. The old you cannot carry this new that is coming. The old businessman cannot carry the apostolic order of prosperity that is coming. The greedy you cannot carry it the stingy you the competitive you cannot carry this dimension of anointing because there is a requisite level of compassion you must have to be trusted with the grace that heals nations are we together yes that leads me to the next prayer point no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Here's the prayer. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work Are you ready to pray this second prayer? Lord, the circumcision that must happen to me to be able to host the new that you are bringing.
that circumcision of the flesh that circumcision in my heart Lord let it happen expand me everything that needs to be done in my life to carry these superior levels of grace prosperity wisdom influence access let it happen someone is praying You are a kingdom financier, pray. It is not just give me, give me, give me. Your first prayer is make me. Make me before give me. Don't just pray and say give me billions. No, this version of you will be an ineffective and inefficient steward. Walk upon my heart so that my hands will be faithful. Walk upon my heart so that my bank account will be faithful. Walk upon my heart so that my sermons will be accurate. Walk upon my heart so that the results will be authentic. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, all through this week, don't just follow the conference in the UK, as wonderful as that is. People are connecting from all over the world. I was sharing with the workers, having a meeting with them, and I was telling them in my mind and based on what I know God is doing now, it is not a UK conference. UK is just the venue for the conference. This is a global conference that is making a major contribution to shift a season and bring God's people particularly the people within the, Euro, the, the, the region of, of Europe and the UK, into an experience. is a baptism that God is bringing his people into. So let me encourage you, let this week be for you a week of spiritual emphasis. Don't just be a fan, I'm watching, I'm wow, see the miracles happening. But let it be a cry. Let deep call on to deep. Some of you may need to go and um, Carry the notebooks that you used to write things with you and God many years ago. Write it. Use those notebooks for this conference. And let there be a cry from your spirit. Lord, my members have been stunted because of my spiritual life. It's time to rise to a new dimension for their sake. There are dimensions in the spirit. Levels of power, grace, influence, capacity to speak his purposes to the nations. This is what... You should do this week but for now and for tonight if you are here and you know that the way your life is please listen that you cannot be a worthy tool for his majesty because you have never genuinely made this conscious decision for Jesus maybe you've come around church maybe you were even a pastor's child or a pastor yourself i'm not asking you what you do spiritually i'm not asking you how many people you've healed i'm not asking you how many people you've prophesied upon i'm asking about your relationship with jesus and hear me ladies and gentlemen one of my precious people as they came to lead the prayers they spoke about massive salvation of souls it is important that we lead people to jesus because every man is only a conduit the end of all this pursuit from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you jesus that's what it's about that is it may start from us but the end is jesus tonight is a very special altar call as we step into this phenomenal week and I'm going to make this call and ask you to run like there's fire on the mountain. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need to make it right. Start this conference with me, not just those in the UK. I need to iron it out, flog it with destiny and hand my life over to Jesus consciously. For those who will summon the courage, the courage that defies ego, the courage that defies who is seeing me, I salute you in advance and I want you to leave your seat as I begin to count one to five. I want you to rush and come and stand here right now. Those outside, all the overflows down to the basement, our family in Zaria and those who are connecting across the globe, I begin my counting now. Leave your seat and run to Jesus. One. Two, go 
Koinonia, are you celebrating them as they come? I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. Keep coming. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask. Come, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He alone is able to give you a new beginning. The Bible calls him the way, the truth, and the life. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask, I surrender. You may never understand the joy that is in the heart of the Father and of Jesus himself when many come and stand before the cross crying in genuine repentance except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God except a man be born of water and of the spirit Jesus told Nicodemus he cannot enter the kingdom he said that which is spirit is spirit and that which is flesh is flesh for God so loved the world the Bible declares that he gave his then only begotten son that whosoever believes on him the bible declares shall not perish but have life everlasting the next verse says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him there is no other name the bible says given among men under heaven by which we must be saved and it assures us that whoever calls upon the name of the lord the same shall be saved. Now you have come. I salute your courage. It took the Spirit of God for you to come here. And we love you as a family of faith. And for all those who are watching by television, watching through the internet, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. As I lead these precious ones in prayer, I'd like you to participate fully, knowing that Jesus is right there with you. Lift your right hand for those of you who are in front here and all the overflows, please follow same. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my life as my Savior, as my King, and as my Lord. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I'm a child of God. I go from glory to glory amen keep your hands lifted father in the name of jesus we thank you for receiving this ones the bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away they've made declarations of faith and according to the integrity of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god and in the name of jesus from tonight i declare and i commend you to the ministry of the word and of the Holy Spirit. There are two of you. I just saw the power of God coming on that light. There is something God is removing out of your life. I rebuke that devil. Let them go now. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, I want you to look please to your left, which will be my right. There are counselors waving the placard. I'd like you to please politely walk to their direction. They will have a word with you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please listen carefully. So whilst they are on their way uh, to meet the counselors, let me... Hello, 
beloved in Christ, we hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.